Hello, my dear friend. You're welcome to Netcode Help Channel. This video was actually made for you. It's going to show you how to create a mobile and desktop application for a book database. We've done this uh, mini project as a playlist for Blazor and also for .NET Maui. So what I have decided is anytime that I create a mini project for Blazor, I'm going to create a respective one for mobile app. You want to have the web app and you want to have the mobile app. So I'm going to name the Blazor one with the Blazor mini project. Also, this is going to be the .NET Mari mini project. So if you want to look up for the web app, check the Blazor mini project. And if you want to look up for the mobile app, check Blazor, not Blazor, .NET Mari mini project check the playlist and you're going to find this playlist over there so this video is about a book database whereby we're going to perform the crowd operations by creating book adding book title description and image and also we can uh, view this book data we can also make an update to the book data we're going to use an sql light as a server in our database and that's what we're going to use in this mini project so as i said earlier on check the playlist and you're going to have a lot of lessons over there there's a mobile app and we have browser apps over there and that's a blazer so you can just check those two playlists out so it is a hand in hand we do this over here for mobile and this for the web you can just look you have the same uh, contest but this is for web and this is for mobile okay so as you can see from the screen i have two um, emulator ready on the screen the first one is the window version that's a desktop application and the second one here it is a mobile application so this is android it could be ios and it could be android but i'm using windows so i have to use the android for now there's a book database as we've done that in in the blazer mini project now in this book project or the book database, it allows you the user to add book, book image, title, and description to the database. You can also perform the crowd operations, you can also edit it, you can also delete it. Now let's go through some few things and see. So this is a list. If I want to add for the desktop version, I'll click on this and I can see we have refresh and we have add book. If I click on refresh, you're going to refresh the whole database and I'll get as the current books or the whole list of books that we have in database. There's no condition. It is getting the whole book from the database. But maybe you can decide to add some condition to it. You can decide to grab the current ones by date, by time, or by ID, any. When you have the basics, you can do that. I can also go to add book and I can just go to using the sync using component. So here, you can click on OK, you can, see you can add book title, description, then you can now select an image over here and I can save the data. When you come to the Android 2, you can also refresh the same thing. So you can also refresh here and you're going to get out the current book. Then we can also add book. You're going to move us to the add book content page whereby you're going to add a book over here. So this is going to be a simple mini project, but it's going to actually help you a lot. So we then have to create a new project and that's going to be .NET Mari project. So let's start by clicking on the file new and I'll create a new .NET Mari project. So that is the name. Now when I'm done with this, I'm going to put this to the GitHub. So you can have access to this book over here from this project. Check the link in the description of this video. And you can have a link to get it to and and also review it. And under the solution that I'm checking here, that is a framework here. It's going to be 7.0. And All right, so the project is now created. So now the project is ready. We have to install some packages. And these are the packages that you're going to use for database creation. So pause the video and I'll try to install this. So I'm going to unload this project. Then, with the project settings, 
these are the packages that we need to install for the database and i'm going to use an sqlite so i need to install these packages so pause the video and install this aside from that i have these package references over here i want to grab a few of them i want us to use we have this community kit.mvvm so install this package too then aside from that let's also install this package Syncfusion core because you're going to be using Syncfusion component. So let's install this package as well. And also, let's install commit2k.mari. So with this, we're going to use Toast to display our content. So we also want to install this. And the last one, we need to install this MVVM helper. So let's also install this too. Yeah. So I believe these are the packages that we need to install. So pause the video and try to install these packages. I'm going to save this and I'm going to close this. Then here, I'll just have to reload with dependencies and that'll be all. So aside from that, I'll just have to build so you can just right click on dependencies and I go to add uh, manage NuGet packages and try to install these packages one after the other. So when done, try to build a solution to see if everything is working as expected. You can see from the build that we have an error here because we need to specify this use Mary. So we need to do that in the program.cs. So let's copy this. And now, after installing the coin2k.mari, you have to register it in the mariprogram.cs file. So, in here, we need to add this. And it is coming from the namespace of community2k.mari. So, we need to add that. Yeah, so we use this one. All right, now let's try to build it again. So now our project is now built and succeeded. Let's get going by first creating our services folder. So let's go to the Solution Explorer here. And we are going to create a folder known as services or data services. That is what we're going to have our services in comprising of our interface and our implementation service. Now let's create a book service that is known as an iBook interface. So we click on new item and here is an iBook service. So you know there's going to be an interface. So you make sure you select an interface over here. You click on add. You have an interface created. You have to make sure all this is public. We can now go in there and I'll clear this out because you know we are not using it for now. We only name you. We only need the namespace. That's all. All right. And you know what? In this interface, we want to have actually three or four methods. The first one is we're going to add or update book async we want to delete book async you want to get books async we want to get a whole list of books and you want to get a single book by id these are the four interfaces that we need to create and we see from here that you haven't this error because this is not found this is not found these are all models that we need to create okay so this is a book model let's grab this and now let's go to our solution explorer we have to then create a folder known as models that is where we're going to organize our models in so this is models and in these models let's create one model known as book so this book we make sure that we set here as public then as you know already it is a code so we don't need this for now let's clear to make it simple we can now save this 
and now you know in here we want to have the following properties we want to just have an id title description image since we are going to use an sqlite we then need to specify the field the property that we want to use as um primary key and also the serial number seeding you want to do as auto increment so we're going to start from one and anytime a data a data or a record is being added it's going to add plus one and so forth so now we are done with this we have to also create our servlet so let's go to the same solution explorer right click on this model and now let's add a class to it so in here any response coming from this service you want to store you want to use this model to handle that so we add a new class and I rename it at service response. And now in this service response, you know, we have to make this as public. Aside from that, we can now go in there and now clear this off. Because, you know, we don't need it for now. Let's save this. And now what are the few properties that you want to get here? You know, when you're using an SQLite database, anytime you perform an update or insert, it has to return an integer that is a current data or record ID being updated. Or deleted so it, it means we have to handle the id or that is an integer to check if the process was successfully completed and if not we know what to do so i would like to pass in three properties here the first one is a flag and that's going to be either it could be true or it could be false second one here is going to be a message that you want to customize and add the third one here is going to be the response from the database as an sqlite entries so we have three properties here and now when you go back to this interface, I think these problems are going to be solved. Control period, control plus dot. Now let's use these models and that is it. Okay. So these are the four methods that we need for our service to get activated. Now we've created this, you know, we have to create an implementation class. So let's copy this book service and now let's go to the same folder where I click on data services and now let's add a new class. This class is going to be book service. So take note, this is an I interface. So there's an I book stand for the interface. There's just a book service. So here we are going to inherit from this book service. So you see we have we are inheriting from this. We can now go in there and create constructor for this. So let's change this to public. And now let's clear all this as well. Alright, so in here. So in here, the first thing that we can do here is we can now inject this SQLite connection. We create an object out of this. Aside from that, let's create an interface for this. And that's a um, constructor. So you create this constructor here. Now you point it to this method. This means that you have to generate this method because it is not currently existing. So we can also create this method and that is a set book database. So this database, we are now checking if this service, if this connection is now then created. So now get to where the file is. If not, then create this as my book DB. So I'm going to name it as demo book DB. So demo book DB. Yeah, so that's the demo book database dot DB3. So you make sure you pass in this to get it created. So it's going to locate it over here. And it's going to check if it is not there, then it's going to create this database for us. And now this database that I'm going to create, it needs some models to create it. So it needs this model, that's a book model that we need. So control period, let's inject it over here. Because this is a model that it needs for to set up the database table name and also the properties as well, the column names. Alright, so aside from having all this, we can now close this peacefully as this to make it simple. Now the next thing to do here is we are going to specify or implement the interfaces that we created in this interface method. So the first method that you want to talk about here it is an add or update async method. It is accepting in as a book as a payload and it is returning a service response. So here we are creating these two components or these two messages as error message and also success message. If you watch the Blazor um, database uh, book database mini project you know we created an error message so we created a success message these messages or this method are private and they are static so the values of this do not change 
that's what you want to do for now but maybe you can decide to make it dynamic whereby you can now specify your own test and i get it generated okay so we're checking if book is now then return this error message but if book id is zero then it means it is coming as a new data entry then you want to check or uh, assign this response id as an integer to the response of this insertion from this database so now after that you're going to check you're passing this response id to this access message so now inside this access message you're going to now check but if not then this is what you're going to do if the id is greater than zero then it means you want to update so you create also a variable known as an integer as update response code you call this update and now we set this success message you pass in this response code to this so all these we are mentioning response code as a success uh, message and also error message what are these um, messages let's have a look at them so we can create these messages down here so you can first have the success and also have an error message so you can see from here the return type here is service response service response for both now they are static it means the values do not change they are stuck as you can see from here that's the same thing that you're going to have and meaning that the instances are going to be created once and for all you know so here we are accepting the payload that's what response id and the same thing response id for success message and for error message and now here if the id here we now check in it comes into the id we assign this id to this database response value then we set the flag to true and there's a static message that you want to display process completed successfully for this access we do same to the error response and i will set this the flag to false and i will display this process field please check and try again okay so if the book is now returns process field if the book or if the process is successfully completed then do process complete successfully and if it's updated to you passing the same this is the first method now when you check our interface we have another method to talk about let's have a look to the next one so we can now hide this minimize it like this we can put this at the down okay now in here the next thing to talk about here is going to be the delete so delete book async we are accepting as a whole book payload now we are calling a method known as get book async we want to check if that book is found if it is found then we delete it if it is not return this error message very simple right here okay now here you can see that we want to return an error message we pass in negative one so negative one means the process isn't completed so you can now make a check with this you can use this negative one anywhere that you call the service response and i use it to check the response of this service now with this let's also create the get book async to get a single book because you know that is what we are doing in the interface we are getting a single book and that is what it depends on so this um service delete book service depends on this get book async to verify that that exact book that you want to delete do exist in the database so let's go to that and i'm going to let's create that over here so this is just one line of code and we have this get book async passing the id we look to the database and now check where id is equal to this id you want to grab the first or default one and now this problem is solved from here so we are done with this we can now also close this now the last one here is to get book async and also very simple just one line of code and that is this one so we're getting a list of books and now we want to convert all the books in database to list then return so these are the interfaces that you need to use in application all right so now we have done this what we can do here is we can now close this and register this in the program.cs file so let's that's a my program.cs file so let's register the interfaces and the implementation class that we just created so we can put it down here and as you can see we need an ibook service and also book service control period let's include the namespace and that is it now we are done with our services here we're now going to create our view models and our views so the first view that we're going to create here is a book list view okay or the add or update book list view so let's create, create that a component or a view that can enable us to add book data to database 
so let's go in there and I we need to create a folder here and I name it as views so add new folder and now we're gonna say this is views and now to this folder let's add one component so a new item we choose .net marry and now sum up content and now here what we should have give it a name so let's delete this and let's create a new one so a new item okay so here you want to add or update book async uh, that's the add or update book page so this is a page that you're going to use to update the book okay so now we have this we need to also create a view model so with the view model let's create a folder known as view models so add new folder and that is a view models So in here we're going to create um, a class so add new class and there's a class so the name here so i'm going to give the name as add or update book page view model and i'm going to click on add you know it's a class now we have this we have to go in there and uh, register this in the program.cs file and also we have to inject it into the code behind file for the view so down here let's paste this now you see we are adding the book view model and we are adding it view now we are done with this we have to go in and also inject this into this page contest so let's go to solution explorer we go to our views and you can see from add or update book async that's the add or update book page we can now inject our the view model that we just created and here we pass in this then we bind this contest so there's an add or update book page and then there's the view model that we have bound okay so the next thing to do here is let's go to this view model and that is the view model here we need to set this as public partial class so public partial class and now aside from this let's clear all this off we want to have a base model that all of these are going to inherit from okay so let's create one class in the view model and we're going to name it as base view model or add book base view model so in here let's right click now let's add a new class the name of this class is going to be add book base view model so this view model we are going to we're going to make this as public partial as well then we can now go in and clear all this so this has to inherit from a component known as object um, observable object from community2k.mvvm component that we installed so we can do that from here that you can see from here we have this add book base view model and now it is inherited from this observable object and now here we want to specify a property known as title so that we can set the title to all components or all views so now we have this let's close this and now let's go to the view model and now we can now inherit this from this add booth based view model aside from that we can now create constructor for this so control period we can now generate constructor for this okay the next thing that we can do here is to create a public variable for our book model because we're going to be adding book so we need to add this model to control period let's add the model and now this observable property has to get from going to k.component model and now here we are creating a private uh, variable as soon as you pass in this attribute on top we're going to make it as public variable so now we have this we can go ahead and then create our component so when you go to the that is the, the views you can see we have this xml page and now let's clear all this here you want to first add a namespace to this view model so first of all let's add the namespace the namespace is going to allow us going to um make the component or the view model accessible in this context so you pass in this is the name now the name of uh, this is demo so we're going to copy this and i replace this over here I just make a copy of this 
and I'll paste it over here. And as you can see from you, you have this view model and you have add or update view model. That's the view model that we have created. And here there's a title. So this title we can now clear and now say binding to the title because you have a public variable as title from this add book based view model here. There's a title and I can have it access the public variable into our XAML page. Okay, so now we are in here. Let's go in and design our form. That's a place to add a book title, book um, description, book image, and also a button to send. In such case, we then need to use this simulation component. We can use any component at all, but thanks simulation has a component that is easy to integrate as well. So let's have a look at this. So to be able to use this simulation component, we have to first add a namespace as input layout. And it is making a reference to this thing fusion.mari.core. Aside from that, you need to then make a reference to the my program.cs file. We need to register this same fishing component before we can use this. So let's navigate to this my program.cs file and are in here. Let's specify it. So that is a configure synfusion core. We save that and we are good to go. So we can now go to the XAML page. And I use this input layout to get all these components that we need. So in here, let's design a simple form. We are using the vertical stack layout. And as you can see from here, we are having we are calling this input holder here. That's the input layout. And now we can have access to the same fusion SF text box layout uh, or input layout. And the title here is what the input title. And we have the text over here as an entry. And as an entry, you know, we're going to bind this entry to the text that we're going to have or to the variable that we're going to have in our model. Remember that when we go to our add or update page um, view model, we created a public or private uh, property here. Now, this private model is going to have its property or this public model as add book model. If I decide to type in add book model, you could see that you're going to have it over here. So there's a public one. So that is what we are using to assign the values in. And when you check here, that's what we are using. So you can see we are grabbing the title here. We want to grab description and we want to also grab an image. So this button here is browse image because you want to add image. And now one thing that I want to talk about here is with the image, you want to convert this image into B64 string so we can save it into our SQLite database. And also whenever we want to display this image, you want to start with convert it from B64 string so that any time that you want to use, we just have to get the component or we just have to get a image of B64 string and now um, display it straight ahead. So in such case, we need to create our control a customized control okay so i try to solve online to get some um, control method which are very easy to implement and I, I found one so that is what i did and here you can see i have it as custom image control so instead of using the image control the image property we are not using this image uh, view or image component we are now using this control that we created as a custom image control now this we are binding the basis default source to the image that is coming in. You know, this image is going to be like the basis default string. As soon as we select this image from this command, it's going to convert the image and now this is going to be the output. And this output is going to come as image of basis default string. So that's why we need to create a control that can um, translate or convert this image default string into an actual image source for this image tag to display okay and we are setting the height and under weight request 250 respectively now let's go in there and create this control so let's first create a folder as custom control so in case in the near future i want to add any custom control to we can add it to that over there and that is the name custom controls now in this custom control we want to add a new class So we name this as custom image control click on add and now in here let's make this as public 
and we can now clear all this now this is going to have it from image so image that's a parent class and now in here we can now go in there and I'll create a method in so in here this is what you want to do we create a public static read only and that's going to be the bendable property we set this to we give it a name as base default source property and we set this to this uh, bundle property dot create so here we are creating the component here okay and now if we see the property change here we assign on base default string source change and now you see from here the name of is the property that we've created over here that's the base default string and there is a type of is a property this so that's a custom image control okay so this name of is going to be the anytime the property that we're going to assign to this component when we check this add model when you check this um that's a the page as soon as you use the custom control we have to specify this as a property of the image this is the four string so that is what we are receiving it over here and now we're going to see the set and the get assessor and now in here we then need to now convert this to an image source from the memory stream okay so anytime that we use this it's going to accept the basis default string and now we're going to convert it back to an image source okay so now we have this can now save this and close it and we need to before this kind of work here we need to include the namespace into our project so down here i can now just paste this so we're going to call us as our controls and now we need to reference it to our project then dot custom controls because as soon as we, we, we've done that this is off the errors are gone so this is now working perfectly as expected now let's work on this button select image command and i'll save image command so if i click on this two command what's going to happen let's go to the view model and that's where we're going to work here so let's first inject our interface and now we need to include this data service now control period let's include let's create an assigned field all right so aside from this you can now set title to the page i want to put this on top of this all right okay so let's have a page title and now the title of the content page that we're going to use here it is add book data we also need to create a method that is a select image as you can see from the book here we are creating a method known as select image now when this image is selected what do you want to do you first want to select the image from the computer from the mobile phone so we are using the file picker to pick a specific image the file type as only images which comprising of the uh, the jpeg the png and also the jpg aside from that we are checking if the image is now if the user could not select the image then return return but in case the user is able to return or reselect an image then we're going to create a byte array here and now this byte we're going to combine the image file name and then the, the file system dot combine or the cache directory where the image is um, found and also we're going to read the image copy to the stream okay and after doing that we're going to now convert it to base default string and we are assigning this mo model here the image string to the converted image so as i speak now this converted image is going to be a string of um base default string of the image that has been selected okay so the next thing to do here is let's see after doing all this we have to now bind this and when we check this view model you can see it is solved now because it is now found okay now you see from here we added command but here we did not add any command what is happening here the reason as soon as you pass in this relay command the name convention is automatically is going to add command to the name that is specified here so if you have, if you want to use this command or this method anywhere as soon as you pass in this attribute you make sure you add command to this because it is automatically going to do that all right so now we have this object here selected what is the next thing to do 
we now have to work on the save button because when you check here there's also a save button here to get it saved now when this select image get converted to base default string you know from here that we are displaying the image from our control and now we are passing in the base 64 string which will then reconvert it to the image source and then display it in the image for us so as soon as we select the image it gets converted and now you see the output of this image that's interesting let's have a look with this save button aside from that we can now run this application and test our add or update component that we have created so when you go back to this view model in here we can now close this and now we can create this save method here so this method is going to assist that with our save command now when you check here we are checking for errors here but there is no any implementation of errors that's why we have this red line under them we also have a method known as validate model and it is accepting this add book model from this property and there's no any method like that so let's first see when we skip this one and come here we are calling this book service and this book service is asked from the service that we um, injected over here and as as at in that service we can have access to this method then we pass in this but you know when you run this without any validation here the user can just hint on the or tap on the button save button the test boxes are going to be empty and it's still going to save that is why we want to skip that so we need to handle these errors now we're going to look through all the components or all the properties and check if any is empty then we want to return the results to the user and display something on the screen okay so in such case we have to create an observable collection of results so we can assign results whilst we loop through it into this method okay so on top here we can assign this that is an observable collection of these errors now this observable collection here we assign it to new one so let's see control period so let's say it is we want to assign to this new then maybe we can have access to this again okay it still works or let's see we can also make it simple so the reason why we are having all this is we are not having any method we don't have any model as error so maybe it is using an internal error over here as you can see from this it is using this javascript system dot runtime dot interrupt services the javascript dot um, js time dot error okay but we don't want to do that we want to create our own error for this so let's clear this off this namespace and now let's save this let's go to our models and now let's create a class known as error so copy this we go to solution explorer in our models let's create one class and now this is going to be error so let's make this as public and now let's clear the ones over here so in this we want to have just two properties here we just want to have the property and its value so if it is the email email the property and now there's the value is the, the, the display or the message that you want to display you could have also used this scenario which comprises of the key and then the value okay any one that you feel to use you can still use it over here now let's save this and i will go back to our component here our model so there's a model here and i could see this model this issue is now solved now let's come down and i'll create this validate model so this validate model is, is accepting a payload of add model or it is accepting a payload of book okay and it's going to now check the book and return the response so instead of creating this model right here maybe you can decide to create a class so we can use it all the time you want to make our work very simple as well you don't want to duplicate methods over in, in, in some places you want to have one simple method whereby you can now use it over here here and here all the time you just need to call the class and it's going to work as far as the context of what we want and the class context meet so let's go to the models and our e-models here 
maybe you can decide to create a new class and the name is going to be maybe validate model so this validate model we're going to make this as public and let's clear all this let's save that so in here we're going to now have this model created so this is going to be um validate model and that is going to be the name of this class okay so we have this class created now this class contains a method known as validate model but we say so let's add validate book model now this let's is going to return bool over here boolean so let's make this a static okay so this is static and now this class is and the model that we created so let's control period let's add this so there's an errors so we have to return a list of errors here as you can see because it's demanding a list over here so we can also create in so here we can now paste our model like this and that is a method known as validate model it is returning a boolean expression here that's going to be true or false it is part accepting a payload of book and now it is checking if it is null then we're going to create this errors that list of errors that we created is going to add it this is a property and that is the value so we're going to add it and now return true that is when it starts from the first one and reaches the last one this means that as soon as we have through here, it means validation is successfully done because it has started from the first and now it has reached what well, the end. So it has reached the, the last end over here. Okay. So now we have this. We call for this method, and that's why we are saying if this returns true, it means that validation is true. But in case it is not, they're going to return because it means there's an error within the code of or the cost of validating we want to return but in case it is true then we want to now check if errors here dot any or the count of error is greater than two then we want to show error so where from this show error this is going to be um, a property that we need to create on top here so let's come top here and let's create that property and it's going to be a bool so let's paste this now you know we are going to use this we're going to use collection view to display the list of errors that we have in this list so we first we want to hide the collection view when the page loads because when the page load the user has not clicked on any button but as soon as the user clicks on the button and it gets validated and we have errors in it that is where you want to display the collection view to display or to get at the list of errors we have or the user has to solve them okay so that's what you're doing here now when the count of error is greater than zero then you want to display this error if not then you want to call this book service you pass in the book model now if the results here dot flag you know this flag is a boolean expression and it could be true could be false we are checking if it is true it means that the, the process has successfully completed then we are creating a new instance of this model it means we want to clear the old one out then we want to create a new one and we want to return and aside from that you want to make a toast over here so to make a toast we are using this make toast we pass in this result message okay so this toast we have to create a method down here so we can add this toast so let's first clear this so we have to create a method and that's going to be make a toast now this is coming from the commit 2 kmarie nuget package that we installed and that package is going to enable us to create toast that can display message when everything works well okay so let's see and that toast we are passing in just a message and aside from that to create a new instance and in our return but in case there's a new error in case this is false it couldn't work then we're going to clear the errors right here maybe initially there's, there were errors here we want to clear it and I want to add the new error to what we have here as a book title cannot be empty. Okay, so and aside from that, 
we're going to show this error in our return. Now, why are we saying book title is not going to be or cannot be empty? Now, when we check this, we have the title here already, right? Book title cannot be empty, and that is this one. So, why do we have to also add this here again? We need not to add it here. We have to then add the error or the message over here. So, instead of passing this value, we rather want to pass in this results.message. So, this, let's set this here as result.message. So, dot message. And this message is going to be an error message. And now here, we're going to write something like alert. Alright. Then we show the error. Now, what we need to do here is we have to now go in there and create our toast. So, down here, we can now go ahead and now create our toast in here. So, this toast has to come from community k dot marry. And as you can see, it has been added over here dot alert. And now we create a toast, we create a cancellation token over here. That could be true or false if supposed to be cancelled. If not, we set the duration to long. We set the font size of the test. And now we pass into this toast method dot make toast. We specify the message as what is coming in. Duration is specified over here. And now the font size is over here. Then we show the toast. Okay. Now you see, so we call this method over here make toast. It needs a parameter as a string. And we provide the parameter over here. So this is done. Um, perfectly now the next thing to do here is we can now go in there and run this application and i see if it's going to work it's going to make success to a database and then create a file or a record that we're going to pass into a database if not just give us the response but before that you know we have to loop through create a, a view a collection view that can loop through the errors that we have here and i'll display it on the screen so let's go to our xaml page and now in our XAML page, let's create a stack layout. So there's stack layout. And now let's paste this collection view in. Aside from that, the next line, we can just grab this vertical stack layout. So let's minimize this. And now let's cut this one and now move it in here. So we have our stack layout and in our stack layout, we have the um, collection view and we have this vertical stack layout which is going to display the form and this one is going to display the errors so if we check this you see we have item source set to this errors this errors were here it is a uh, the list and now you see this is visible we are setting it to the property of show error now this show error you can see is a boolean so it can return true it can return false when a button is clicked it is return what for true so it is going to show when you have errors in it now we need to also add this model and that's an error model that we created because we need to fish out the, the property and the value here. So let's add a model to the namespace in here. So that is it and we have to copy the namespace that's a project name and now put it here. So we are referring to the model and now when you, when you go to the model, you're going to have a model known as errors. So solution explorer go to models and you see we have this error model that's what we are specifying over here and that model contains property and a value so that is the one that we are looking over here okay so now i think everything is working perfectly the next thing to do here is we have to add a toolbar maybe this toolbar is going to navigate us to the home page and aside from that we have to also register this component in the um, app shell dot example dot cs file as well so let's first create the two bar on top here. So let's paste this. And now we're creating a content page or two bar that's going to display on top. And now we are saying this is go to home. So this is our sign out as a home. So this is our add content page or add book page. And if the, if the user wants to navigate to the home, the user can now click on this button and it's going to send the person back to the home. Now we haven't created this button definition for this button yet. So let's save this and now let's go back to the view model. And now in here, we have to create that component or that method to navigate to the home. So we create a simple method that's going to return the person to the home page. And we want to set this as what? Well. That's a um, animation. We set it through. And now this dot dot here means home page. Okay. And uh, we have a button as relay command. So as soon as we type in this, 
it's going to add navigate to home then you're going to add the command as a naming convention so when you check here that is exactly what we are displaying over here okay so you can see now it is soft now let's have to register this component in the app.cs so let's save this solution explorer now go to app shell and now in here we need to register the component in here so in here we can add this this add page so routing.register route then we can add the name of and the type of of the same component all right so i believe everything is set now all right we can now save this and let's try to build this on the Android or first let's try this on the Windows and now see so while this is running we can see that it's going to launch the default page as main page and on the main page we have nothing about there because when you check this solution as power because we have this main page and that is what's set as a default page we need to create uh, our own page then set it as a default page as you can see we have a page added but we can't see anything here so let's close this up and now let's create a new component here and that is what we are going to use as a home page instead of this main page here so i click on views click on add new item we're going to choose .net mary content page and now in here let's set this as a home page So in here we're gonna say book list, um, book list home page. Let's click on add, and now we can now go to this app shell dot um, cs or dot xaml, and now we can have access to this. So instead of having this local to this, we can now use dot then uh, views folder, and now this can have access to this method that we created. So let's copy this book list home page, and now let's go to the app shell. And I'll paste it here. So if assigned to that, okay. Now the next thing is you want to add a button where we can click on add um, product or add book data. So we can do that by creating, go to this home page, and now let's clear all this up and let's try to add this toolbar item here. So the toolbar items that you want to add, you want to add both two items. The first one is where well, we have this load from database command. But for now, we are going to hide that cause. Control K and C. Let's comment it. We'll talk about this later on. Now, there is an add book. So here we have to also create a method in this, and that is known as navigate to add book um, command. This means we have to also create a content or a view model for this. So let's go to this page so i want to copy this go to view model right click on unless add a new class and unless set the name as book list uh, book detailed not book detail we want to have a home page instead so you can now make a, uh, an edit of this and i make a book list home page view model so this is what you want to create now you know this has to inherit from you can now clear this this has to inherit from this add page base view model um, that we created earlier on so let's save this we then have to make this as public partial then this has to inherit from this add page view model okay so now we have this we need to now create our method to navigate and now this method is going to do that for us you know it's a relay command the method name is navigate to add book page and now we are having we are navigating to this component and that's the add this has to be inside this method okay so control kd now let's control period let's include this input and now it is solved saved now okay now let's add the views okay so now we have this we have to now go in and bound or bind this view model to its content that is the views content so let's see so let's go back to this page so this is explorer 
now that's a book list you go to the views folder and this one go to the cs file and i in here let's inject hv model and control period let's include the view models and i have to set the binding to that so binding contest is equal to then you can have access to this book list view model so let's paste this and that'll be all okay now let's go back to oh okay so we have this two we have to clear one okay so public let's have the open all right control kd solved now all right so let's go to we have to register this in the program.cs file and also we have to add the namespace to the book list page so this is the home page let's first add the namespace here so we can go to the view model for this app or update and in here you can just copy these models so view models and data type let's copy this too let's go back to the view the home page for this and now in here we can now paste this and instead of this book list home page instead of this add or update book home page we want to remove it replace it with the book list home page view model and now you can have access to this command okay so let's save this and then let's run this again and see yeah we forgot one thing we did not register it in the program.cs file that's why i have this error let's let's do that so solution explorer my program.cs file down here we cannot register this okay so you have book detail not book detail supposed to be book list home page so let's grab this and now let's paste this save that now let's try it again so our page is now loaded as you can see from here we have book list home page so let's click on this button and i can see add um, book and let's navigate us to a page okay so since we are using a trial version for this component that's why we are having this pop-up click on ok and now here if i decide to click on save data i must have an exception you see from here it, it is it is now checking so it is saying object reference not set to an instance of this and that is a validate book so in here this is what you need to do first we have to initialize this so in the controller or that is in the constructor we have to open this up and now let's initialize this so we say that add book model is equal to new book now save this and let's restart this So now let's click on this add book and now let's see so it is having an issue with the memory stream so with this exception we can solve this by having um putting this in checking if it is now first so the new object coming in here we check if it is not now they want to read from the memory stream okay and also when we go back to this home page that is the add page view model when the button is clicked this is what you want to do now when you come to this right date model we first have to check if the description is now return this but in case it is not now then let's check if the length less than 20 they want to display this so the minimum length of text must be 20 because you have to check this this has been must be an else statement because if the element of the description is now then this statement is going to have an error because the length of this won't be it can't count because it is now we're going to have an exception here so you make sure you put this into an else statement block all right so we save this now and we can now run this application and i will hope to see it works
all right so let's click on this and now click on add book and let's navigate us to the add book page and that is it where we are so if i click on save data you can see must have a book title cannot be now description cannot be now etc if i click on it again you're going to maintain the same thing but as soon as i pass in this is book title and if i click on save you can see that one is off the two left here so we need to type in this is book description and now this is supposed to be 20 if i click on the see minimal length must be what 20. so you can just type in minimum all right so something like this and if i click on save data now you can see the image has to also be filled so let's click on this to select an image and now you can now go in there and now choose maybe this image about so as soon as this image is chosen it has to convert this image into basis default string and we are hoping to see this image over here but it seems we are not let's see first so let's click on save data and i see if we have any any error in it let's go to our page and check here first where it's supposed to convert this image so we go back to the method of add book view model all right and that is this one so this is an image that it needs to select to so use the file picker to pick the image aside from that if image is now you want to return and we create a byte and we get the file name we open read we open stream then we now convert the image with the first string and assigned this image as a string to the converted image okay so now we have this we have this image is equal to this image and now the reason why we are not having that is as soon as the page loads let's say this image is assigned as a new now let's save this and let's refresh this again and see so in here let's select an image and see if it's still going to pop up to display all right so it is not displaying now let's go back again and try to let's go to the view model and now in here maybe let's try to convert to base default string by using this method and now here we need to create an image source component or that's we need to create it away as a property object so down here let's add that so we do this to image source then we create an object out of that and now we can now assign this over here to this image source so this image source you can create um, an image tag in there and now assign this image source to it but you make sure you also enable this i disabled earlier on you make sure you enable it as well okay so with this let's go back to this add page and now here instead of using this control we're gonna now use just an image to display that so let's set this as source then let's use image here then that's going to be the, the source we have our width and height okay so let's see so we're going to bind it to this the image source image source file that is what we are buying this image tag to all right so like this and i think this is going to solve that issue let's try to um, run this again all right so let's click on this add book and now let's choose an image from here so we're going to choose any image and i can see we have the image here let's add a title so this is book title the next one and description let's create one component and that's what we have already that's a book list to display the whole list of uh, book that we have inside our database so let's close all like this close all tabs and now we can now stop this so if we go back to the solution explorer we go to the book list home page view model and now in here we are going to just create an, a list of collapsing object to hold the list of book from the database so here we're going to create a constructor and now inject the services so we create a constructor now you can see from here we are creating a observable rate collection 
and now this collection is out of this mvvm helpers so we need to use this now this book is a model that we created so let's inject this and then we have to also inject this data services all right we set the book to netcode book list now let's create a method to load the data so now this page gets loaded so down here we can now generate a method as load book from database and we are setting this grid visibility so what is the um, grid visibility that is when the the grid is empty we want to hide that and if it contains data then display so we need to create a variable here to hold that and we can do that on top here so we create that grid visibility as a boolean and i'll set over here so you can see we are, we are calling the service we are checking the count if it is greater than zero then we are going to clear the list of this book here then we're going to loop through and i'm going to create a substring so we want to have maybe if the if the test here it is uh, more than 30 we want to append dot 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 okay so that when we get to the details we can see everything if not the whole details of the uh, book is going to be shown up over there and we don't want to do that so here we are making a shorthand over here and append dot 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 when the count is what more than 30. we create a new book and now we assign the description over here then we set this grid visibility to true. Okay. Now we have this. We need to create a collection view in the home page. And I'm trying to loop through, loop through this or display the content from this book. So let's go to the solution. And let's go to the book list home page. We say we've bounded it over here already. So it is bound. Now let's go to this page here. And now in here we have to. That is where we can activate this refresh because anytime that I want to refresh, we are calling this model. Click on this, it's going to execute that model again. Okay, so in here, let's generate, uh, let's create our collection view. So all this source code will be available at GitHub as well. So that's what we are doing. We are using an activity indicator. We're setting the visibility to that is when this comp uh, when this method is running, and setting the running to when it is also running. So when it is running, this activity indicator is going to be visible. As soon as it stops running, it's going to be hidden. Now we set the grid visibility to this grid visibility um, variable that we created in this page. That's the view model here. So initially, when the page, when button is clicked, it's supposed to be hidden. After data has been assigned to the list, then display the grid. All right. So that's what we are doing. And as you can see from here, we create a collection view. We bind it to the books. We create an item template. And now from here, we specify the data type as models. So it means you have to specify the data type as models over here. So let's have this XL, MN, then we're going to have models, CL dash namespace. Then you can have this demo. Then we go for this models. And this is going to be solved because you're looking for this book model. And here too, we are going for this um, frame gesture. We create a frame here to display the content. And now with each frame, we are going to create for this the gesture recognizer. So when you tap on it, you want to navigate to a page that is a navigate to details command. We're going to call this. Now when you swap to the left, it's going to navigate to that is a here delete book data command. And when you swap to right, it's going to update. Okay, so that is the gesture that we are using. We are using the tab, the swap left, and the swap right for going to views and also for deleting and updating. And that is we are binding the parameter to the current content. And this current content is going to ref refer to what it is. It's holding at a spot from this uh, book model. Okay, aside from that, we are displaying. We display our control here. So this control is going to display the image of the current content here. The current book that we have is going to display the image. So this means we have to include the namespace of this. So down here, or uh, you can just put it here. And now this title too, we can set it to binding. Then we can set to this title. Okay. Now this is going to go off. It's going to be soft because you have the control being added. And, and that's the control. So we need to just copy the namespace here. And now we have to just replace it. And that will be all.
okay so that's what we are doing over here now we need to create this command so that's a um, delete and also the update and then navigate to details command we need to create them so let's go to the view model view model here maybe if you want to go through this again let me just scroll over there for you to see what you have so that's because we are buying the command parameter to itself there's a method the path and these are the view models okay after these view models we've we've bound them to this content page already so now let's go in there and create this three um, method in there so we are in here and on the first method we have this one created already so navigate to add page so do we have that let's see so when you go here there is navigate to details command so we need to create that command and that'll be all so let's come here so if i click on navigate to details we want to accept the book model we check if it is not now then we are going to create a parameter object from the dictionary of parameters and now we're going to get the book async we want to get the book data from the database because you know when looping through them in the list we shorthand the the description and append only three dots to it we want to grab the full list so we have to get this method call this method from the service and now we're going to assign it to this so it means you have to create this book details page so let's copy this let's go to solution explorer in our view model views let's create new item so this is going to be .NET Mary content page and now here is going to be view okay so we are navigating to this page so so now control period okay it is now even soft so this is what you're going to so in this page we have to accept parameters from that as a query property so we can, and it must match with the property name that you have assigned over here and that is the object or the model that is going to be received from that that place okay now before you forget let's register this in the program.cs file and that's the mario program so we need to register this here too yeah so we have this over here that's a book detail page but this here we have to copy this and now we're going to create a view model into this view models folder so let's add a class as view model and that is what's going to solve this from this page okay now let's see yeah it is solved now the next thing to do here is let's register this that is a do um this book details page in the actual.razor so so we can enable us to navigate through it so we're going to paste it here so we have this too okay now let's go in there and now we have this so we have to bind it to the context of this detail so we go to the views and that is a uh, view book details page we have to inject this then we can now bind this so binding contest that is this it's equal to then you can have access to this so this control period we can include it view model also let's go to this book details here and this is supposed to be public partial class so we can close this and now here it has to inherit from add book base view model we save that also let's go to the book list and now you can see we have one method specified uh, book list home page view model that's the navigate to detailed page let's also have the update and now the delete one so when it comes to the delete two we are creating a relay command and a delete book async you pass in the same book to be deleted as an object from this book model and now here we want to confirm from the user are you sure you want to delete this we pass in the book title so if the answer is yes then we want to make this toast okay we want to call this book service and now make this toast. so it means that we could have created um, a class to represent this toast, but for this video let's let's just go in there and copy this and I'll paste the toast here so we paste this toast, and that's what we are calling this so make this toast, and now we call this load book from database again 
to get the current content so because the first one is deleted and it must be removed and now replace it with a new one or the one that have been added all right now the last one here is after making this you see we have a delete we have um navigate to details we have to update it and so to update that i'm going to put it here we also pass in the book to be updated we also want to check the same thing and if it works we're going to create there's a, um, a navigation property of what that is a dictionary and we're going to populate it and we are, we pass the description here to this because you know we have to acquire this service to get the data you want to specifically get the description so we call the data here that's a service to get and pass in the id to get that uh, specific record and i pass it to this the name that we are using to accept as a parameter here is going to be the update book data. Then the data that we have from this service, we pass it along. Okay, so this means that the two pages, that is uh, where it's going to receive for update and now where it's going to receive for the um, details, it has to receive this and I display them. So let's see what to do. By first, let's work on the details one. So we have to create a component. And now we have a book details component already. So let's go in there and now try to work on that. So save this. There's a book detail page. And when you go to this, you have to we've bound it to you already. So the book details, let's try to put something in here. So what you're gonna do here is first you're gonna accept query property and that is a book model, and we have this book model view details. That is what has been assigned to this book list home page. So if we see this. You copy this word. That's the name that it is holding. So we have to get that name, receive that name from here. Now we have to create this model. So in here, we have to initialize it as a private property. We pass this observe property on top. And it is now solved. So this control period, let's include the models. And this is solved now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a component so we can loop through this and I'll display the content in there. So I'm going to save this. So first of all, let's go to the book detail dot um, Zambal file. And that is this one. Let's include some namespace over here. So let's move this. Okay. So I'm going to copy the model, the project name, and I replace it in here. And here too, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to replace this then replace this because we want to link the model and aside from that we have this view model and you want to go in for this book detailed page view model okay and also here we can link this information component i'm not sure we're going to use this for now so we can clear this off and i will link our control as well then we bind the title so after doing that let's clear this content here now let's design a simple form to hold the data and uh, you know this, as i said design sucks because it, it takes a lot of time i'm going to put this github so you can just go in there and grab them okay we just have to create a vertical stack layout we create our control we bind our image then we create our frame over here then we call our model.id title and description that's what we are doing to display the details of the page or the model that is coming in very simple one okay so now we are good to go. We are done with this. Let's talk about the, the, the update to and the update you want to handle that inside this add page. So add or update page. So here, add or update page view model. You want to handle that on top here. So let's put the query property on top here to receive the incoming data. And now here we paste it on top here. So this add, uh, book model, it is what have been assigned over here. Okay. So anytime it comes in, it's going to assign to this and we can now run this out. And this is the name that it is coming to accept it. So in here, let's start. And I think we are good to go now. So you can just run the application and see. But we first have to register this. Okay, so we've done the registration. Let's save this and now let's try our hands on this. So you can see that our page is now loaded as a netcode book list, but we are not seeing any data here because we haven't called the method. 
So the method, when you go to book list, um, view model, you have this method as load book list. And we are not calling this method anywhere to get the data. So now let's call this when the page appeared. And we're going to do that in the code behind file from this book detail. That is a book list. Homepage.xaml.cs. So view code. And that is where we have to work here. So let's do it here. And we're going to pass in override. Then on appearing. So with this control period. Let's create an assign field here. And now we can now use the property here as book list home page dot. Then you can see we have this load command dot execute. Then we can pass in this or this to make it work. All right. So let's save this again. And now let's restart. Yeah, so you can see when the page loads, we have our book and the titles over here. So you can see this is more than 30. So you can see we have this dot, dot, dot. If I click on this book title, I have to navigate to the detail page. And as you can see, um, I have this. Okay. So this is a detail. You can see I have the book share number, the title, and the description also here. Now, if I go back and you're going to refresh, so you can see the indicator, it um, loads. If I click on this too, we see how the description over here. Now let's go back and see this one is the one that has this dot dot dot. So it's going to call this get book async uh, service and I get a whole list. And I'm going to have the whole list as you can see from here. All right. Now let's try to run this in Android and see. So I'm going to, when this works, we're going to add data to that. And if I click on this, because you have this refresh, if I click on this refresh, because it loads and I get the data from the database. Now, the reason why it is loading here, it is we appended um, tax.delay at 1000, that's a one second. So it, it waits one second before it get the um, code executed. Because when you check this home page view model, you can see when the page loads, if I open this, you can see it is waiting for 1000 seconds. And that's, that makes it see that make you see the load indicator over there okay now let's stop this let's find this on android 2 and see if this also works if it works then we can now add data in that i'm going to stop this here and now we're going to run this in android so we're going to select this framework as android and now let's run this So it is now ready and I tried to figure out some image over here. So let's try to add book. Now if I click on this, it does navigate us to the page where we can add a book here. So this is a book title as you can see from this. And I'm going to copy this from here. And I'm going to paste it here. And let's say over the description, I want to copy the whole description of this. And I'll just go in there and add a description. Okay. Now let's choose an image. I have some images. So let's see if we can actually navigate us to a place to get image. Okay. So you have this image. Let me choose this one. Next, you have the image added. Now, if I click on save data, let's see what happens. Okay. So it is second. Let's close this quick so continue on and okay so you can see we have the toast process completed successfully so the toast is now working let's add another one so let's try to add maybe this and let's see so that's the book title now the description too Let's copy this from here up to this. Let's go to the page and now let's paste this here. Let's choose an image and the second one. And that is it. So let's save and we have our toast. Now let's click on home and it's loading together the whole book. 
So you see we have the book here, but I want to check the list. The description, it has been appended with three dots. As soon as I click on any of this, it navigates us to the view page and I could read the whole description of the book that we provided. And here too, we have these features that you can use. That is a swap left and right. So if I click on this, you can see that's a tab. I can read the whole details of the book. And that is it. If I go back and also try to swap left or right, it's going to have the other features as well. So let's see from here, I'm going to swap to this side. And it tells me, are you sure you want to delete this? If I click on um, no, nothing happened. Okay. And also from this side, I can also go for an update. So let me click on drag it on it again. Yeah, I can see you confirm update and no. So let's try with the delete. Maybe let's try to delete one. If I click yes, you can see um, it's completed and it is deleted. You can see it is no more there. Why is it more there? I can just refresh this to get me the current data that I have in here. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You know, I'm going to leave this video um, or this source code at the GitHub. So you can just go in there and now get it. Check the description and you can see it over there. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up.